Central Church, living the gospel of Jesus Christ, being God's love with our neighbors in all places. God calls us to feed the hungry. We do that. God tells us to find clothes for people who don't have any. We do that. God calls us to care about our community. And we do that. Central Church, across from the Cider Mill in Endicott, serving around the world. Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. We're all here. By the grace of God, we are all here on this beautiful sunny day to celebrate this community of faith together, to celebrate God's presence in our lives, to sing together, to pray together, to nurture each other in our journeys, to listen for God's voice. Today, also, we are here celebrating camping ministry and the ways that that helps people reach God and hear God's voice in another setting. So we have come to worship. May the Holy Spirit fill this time. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts that we may leave from this place overflowing with God's love, God's love and grace. And welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning. And we welcome our television audience. We're very, very happy that you could join us this morning. Um, in your pews, you will find your pads that you sign. And if you will pass them down through, and in those pads, you will find an envelope for camping. Because this morning we are... We are celebrating camping and our 44 years of Lucas Jackson and um, our long history of Central being involved with Sky Lake. There is one envelope per pew, so we are hoping to find a lot of fat envelopes at the end of the service. We have a couple of um, minute speakers this morning, actually three. The first one is Bill Carmine. Everyone, I am here, standing here this morning for the sole purpose of enticing every man and woman of this church to start their spring cleaning. And the reason for that, of course, is on the May 20th and the 21st, we're going to have our annual garage sale. And to have a garage sale, you have to have things. So when you're doing your spring cleaning and you come on one of those treasures that you bought 15 years ago and it's kind of tarnished and it's no longer a treasure, it's a stuff, set them aside, bring them to the church starting tomorrow and put them down in the youth center and I'll take good care of them until the time it comes that we're going to turn them into treasures magically, and people will come and help themselves almost with the prices that we have. Also on that day, <clears throat> oh, and if you have large things, we, since we have limited space, don't bring them until the week before the 20th and the 21st, and then we'll take care of them. And if you have something too big that you, you, don't, you can't take care of yourself and bring it here, Call me, 239-4454, and I'll come and get it. <laughs> and also, there's a young gentleman sitting out there who makes Art Felton's famous pulled pork sandwiches, and he's going to be on tap that day on Saturday. Tickets will go on sale next Sunday. And next Sunday also, there'll be sign-up sheets for any of you wonderful people who'd like to come and help poor old me put this thing on because I can use all the help I get. I can use all the women to help price and all the men to help move the tables and do whatever the women want us to do. Thank you. Next up is Knud Hansen.
Good morning. Forty-four years ago, a program was begun here at Central that is still continuing. It brings together children from different racial and economical backgrounds in the setting of Sky Lake. They are helped to live together in peace and harmony and understanding the many things that we have in common. The scholarships make it possible for the children to attend any camp of their choice at Sky Lake. We have never been a part of Central to Budget, but have received, excuse me, I can't read my own printing. Uh, we've never been part of Central's budget, but have received a lot of funding from the members of Central and from groups within the church and the Triple Cities Running Club. We are grateful for your support and hope that you will continue to support the Lucas Jackson Scholarship Fund. Thank you very much. And continuing on the Camping Sky Lake theme, on Saturday, May 7th, you can help Sky Lake by volunteering to help clean up the camp. Carpooling can be arranged by calling the church office. And there's a couple other announcements. The contemporary worship will be held tonight at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This will be the last service for the year and we'll celebrate another great year by featuring a set of our favorite worship songs. And you're getting a little preview here this morning. <laughs> An Act of Love film will be shown on Friday, April 22nd at 6.30 p.m. A documentary about the trial of Reverend Frank Schaefer who risked his career for his son. An Act of Love follows Frank and his family from the initial trial through his final judicial council hearing. And Reconciling Con Congregation Decision Day, May 1st, Sunday. Mark your calendars because it's very important. Follow the, following the 11 a.m. service, participants will, we will share a light lunch and then spend time in community discussion prying prior to making this de important decision. This is a church conference, which means all members of Central who are present may vote, and your vote is very, very important. Please try to be here. Can we join in the call to worship? Like the tender parent who supports the child's first steps. Like the loving grandparent who gathers us into an abundant lap. Like a lasting friend who seems to sense our needs. In many ways and with many faces. Let us pray together. God of infinite joy, we are blessed by your goodness to us. Our hearts are filled with your praise for your constant care for us, for the possibilities of peace to touch us with you in the world, for the glimpses of peace and the signs of evil. God of surprises and joy, fill our voices with songs of praise, fill our hearts with Please stand if you're able and join in singing hymn number 572, Pass It On.
turn to our neighbor and greet them with love.
kids that want to come up? Awesome. Well, while we're waiting for them, I'm Matt, and I'm the director of Sky Lake. I met some of you this morning in Sunday school. But I'm here this morning to talk about a mythical creature. Once upon a time, in a far off place, and by once upon a time, I mean 1972. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Long, long time ago. That was before I was even born. And I'm old. I know, right? It's probably before your parents were born. Maybe, maybe even, no. <laughs> and uh, there was this mythical creature called Harvey the Hippo. And he came to be at a place called Sky Lake, which is like 30 minutes away. So two episodes of Chucking Food. <laughs> and he lives there, and he does some fun stuff. Do you know what kind of fun stuff he does at Sky Lake? He does a lot of swimming. He does. He makes ice cream from scratch, right? Do you know what his favorite uh, flavor of ice cream is? His isn't one. Mine is watermelon. Harvey's? Hey. I know. So he doesn't, he, we, we've asked him to tone it down, maybe go with chocolate or vanilla. You, you, you think about that. I saw another hand over here. Alex, what do you think Harvey does? He does kayaking and he does archery. It's kind of like a form of boating. You'll have to come figure it out. Try it for yourself. Did you think about it? He plays instruments, his favorite, the kazoo. Mm -hmm. Some people probably thought I was gonna say guitar because there is a song about it, but no, it's actually the kazoo. And you know what else Harvey likes to do? Um, One of his big, what? He eats lunch. Do you know how much food he eats every day? 200 pounds of food every day. It's completely imaginary. It's, you, you would not imagine the imagination uh, advancements that have been made since 1972. So, his all-time favorite thing to do at Sky Lake, besides hanging out with, with awesome campers, is to be in worship. Did you know that? He, he really likes leading evening vespers and morning walks sometimes, and he likes uh, singing about Jesus, and he likes hanging out with people in worship and learning about God more. It's, it's, it's a great time. And he hopes that you will come and visit us in that mythical place called Sky Lake this summer. And would you join Harvey in prayer? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Dear God, thanks for these awesome, awesome kids. And we hope that we might be able to spend some time with them in your great creation out at Sky Lake this summer. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you all. I look forward to seeing you this summer. So do I. <laughs>
We come to a time to offer ourselves and our gifts to God's purposes. If you are a visitor with us this morning, please do not feel obligated to put anything in the plate. Your presence is your gift to us. Will the ushers please come forward?
come from you, O oh God. Let us pray. Holy God, you work wonders beyond our imagination. Thank you for all of the faithful people you have inspired in the history of the church. You have sent into our lives kind Christians who have encouraged us in beautiful ways. Help us to keep growing as disciples led by your spirit. May we become more devoted to good works and acts of charity so that others will be pleased in turn. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing song number 344, Lord, you have come to the lake shore.
seated. As we come to our time of sharing of joys and concerns, please refer to the back of your bulletin for those who we need to keep in our prayers this week. In the hospital or recovering is Dan Hungerford. He is home. He went home Wednesday and he apparently is doing very well. And Bill Weber, who is at Wilson. And the families that are receiving prayer in our prayer program this week are Kathy Arrington, Deborah Buglioni, Linda and Dieter Dauber, Ray Frederick, Carol Hemingway, Debbie Kish, Jane Mecca, Deborah Reynolds, Ariana Stevens, and Judy Wilson. For our church family and friends, Tony Luparella, and all our homebound members. And our sympathies are extended to Roger Failing on the death of his sister, Phyllis Burke, Martha Petrish on the death of her sister, Norma, Dottie Dauber on the death of her stepfather, and Lori Ferris on the death of her father, Thomas Jacobs. been a hard week for many central families. But there are celebrations as well, places of joy, places of blessing. Where have you seen God at work in your life this week? Linda. Friend Marty and the tumor is gone. That's the celebration. What are the places where you've seen God at work in your life this week? A newborn niece. A newborn niece. Congratulations. All the flowers and sunshine. Sunshine and flowers, yes. Other celebrations. The ongoing ministry of people in the parents is exciting. Things have gone on to me and me. Just what is that? The ongoing ministry of folks like Matt at Sky Lake and the ongoing ministries of years of years and years. Should we be in prayer together? Holy One, we are your ordinary people gathered in this wonderful place to be in your glorious and extraordinary presence. And we are grateful. We are grateful for this time together each week. We are grateful that you call us to love and to be loved no matter who we are, where we come from, or what this week has been like. You love us through it and sometimes in spite of it. We are grateful for this opportunity to listen for your word, to see your love in the faces of others, to hear the chance that we have to be your people in this world. When we are energized by that news, be with us. When we are confronted with fear about living your life in this world, when we get nervous or anxious about that, be with us. Grant us courage and strength to live as you call us to live. To live in love and service as Christ did. You've called us to be in ministry, to love without regard, to love extravagantly, wastefully. 
Help us to live that love out in our lives. We've already prayed for some this morning who need your love and comfort, who will experience it through us. But we carry so many more with us. Family and friends and neighbors and folks we've just heard about who are struggling or suffering in some way, who need hope, who need healing, who need comfort, who need a reason to face tomorrow. And so we ask your strength and comfort as we minister to each one that we name before you now as we speak their names into this space. each name, you know each story, you know each life, yet we ask it anyway. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers, for we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ, as we offer to you the prayer that he first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The second scripture that reading this morning is taken from Acts 9, verses 36 through 43. Down the road away in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, gazelle in our language. She was well known for doing good and helping out. During the time Peter was in the area, she became sick and died. Her friends prepared her body for burial, and put her in a cool room. Some of the disciples had heard that Peter was visiting in nearby Lydda and sent two men to ask if he would be so kind as to come over. Peter got right up and went with them. They took him into the room where Tabitha's body was laid out. Her old friends, most of them widows, were in the room mourning. They showed Peter pieces of clothing the gazelle had made while she was with them. Peter put the widows all out of the room. He knelt and prayed. Then he spoke directly to the body. Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He took her hand and helped her up. Then he called in the believers and widows and presented her to them alive. When this became known all over Joppa, many put their trust in the master. Peter stayed on a long time in Joppa as a guest of Simon the Tanner. Over the next few weeks, we will hear some folks share their faith stories, what their lives have looked like with God in them, what difference God has made in their lives. And um, Allison is to be commended. She volunteered to go first. Good morning. Again, my name is Allison Clock, and I'm here this morning to share with you all a little bit how I've come to know and grow closer with God. I've been very fortunate, whereas I've had plenty of opportunities to grow in my faith by having incredible role models here at Central and partaking in mission work and trips. 
But I can say the most prominent influence to my faith would be the summers that I've spent at Sky Lake, and in particular, the first one. It was the summer before my first year of high school, and I was offered the opportunity to attend a session at camp called Camp Lead. Camp Lead was a camp that was geared towards making high school age kids more equipped to become leaders in their own congregations. A little unsure, I accepted. I was nervous because I would never been there before and I figured that I wouldn't know anyone, but I decided that it would be a new opportunity for me and that I should go for it. The part about me not knowing anyone ended up being true because I didn't know a single person and it had appeared that the majority of the other campers either knew each other from their own churches or from already having spent years together as campers. Naturally, I thought this would make me an outcast. However, unlike any other new environment I've ever been placed into, it didn't. It was almost eerie how I wasn't made to feel like an outsider, like I had expected. Being in middle school a month prior, I had to struggle to fit in with kids who I'd known for years. But here were these kids and all these new people whom I had just met welcoming me into their friend groups. And I couldn't wrap my head around it. I was just accepted without me having to prove them my worth. They just accepted me. And the weird thing was, they liked me. I didn't even have to try to impress them. They just liked me for the quirky, awkward 14-year-old that I was. And regardless of who I was or where I came from or how I differed in looks or in what I believed or in anything else really, I was included in all the conversations, all the activities, everything and by everyone. And that is something that is so unique because I have yet to experience the same thing anywhere else there I've been. And the most amazing part of it all was that they didn't have to do that. The staff and the rest of the campers made me feel so at home. In fact, they made Sky Lake my home away from home. I hadn't done anything to deserve their kindness towards me or their friendship or any of the other spectacular things that they did for me during that week of camp. But it didn't matter. I was treated the same as everyone else. I was given the same opportunities to make connections with people and with nature and with our creator as everyone else did. That week I felt like I was engulfed in love. And again, the crazy part was I hadn't done a single thing to earn it. It was just given to me. The love was just there and shared between everyone. That week of camp was special to me for many reasons, but the reason that rings the most true is because during my first week of camp, I truly felt what it was like to be loved by God. And whether they knew it or not, God's unmerited love was shown to me through the staff at Sky Lake and by my fellow campers. And it's still one of the most miraculous and mind-boggling things that I've ever experienced. And the most exciting part of this is that this is the case for every single camper who spends at least one week at Sky Lake. I promise you that every camper will experience God's love firsthand through the community of Sky Lake. This also inspired me, or this alone inspired me during that first week of camp to someday become a part of the staff at Sky Lake. I wanted to be a part of something so special at a greater capacity. And being a part of the staff is one of the most meaningful and rewarding things I think I can and probably ever will do because being a staff member is the same thing as being an extension of God's love to someone. Sky Lake has not only shaped my faith, but also who I am. It shaped my faith because I know that God is real because of camp. Because of Sky Lake, I've experienced God's presence and God's love firsthand. As a camper, I remember having a conversation about heaven with another camper. We were imagining what it could be like, and I remember saying that I thought heaven was probably just like a big Sky Lake. And this is something I still firmly believe today. I encourage anyone and everyone to take part in Sky Lake in some capacity. Whether it's as a camper or a staff member or a volunteer, Sky Lake is a magical, wonderful, God-filled place, and it will transform your life just like it has transformed mine. Thank you. Thank you, Allison.
pretty sure none of that has anything to do with her decision to go into ministry. <laughs> Everyone has a faith story. I'm assuming you do because you're here. Faith story of some kind. It may be a long one, a long, long story of faith found early and growing stronger as you grew older. It may be a story of feeling like God has been your friend from the first day you ever learned about God. Or your story may be a story of a bumpy road full of wandering in and out of the God life, turning away from God and coming back and turning away and coming back and turning in again and again and again. It may be a very, very short story starting this morning when you woke up and decided for some reason to come to worship today. You may not even be completely sure why. Everyone has a faith story, good or bad, short or long. So for a few weeks this spring, we're going to hear from a few folks in this congregation what their faith stories look like. You'll notice that none of them are the same. Nobody has the same journey as another person. The stories are in scripture too. The Bible is a collection of stories of ordinary people whose faith journeys are shared so that we can learn something about what living in relationship with God looks like. Their stories come to us not because we should see them as some sort of ideal that we can never attain, but as a reminder that everyone has an experience of God, everyone has a faith story to live out, whether they realize it yet or not. Today, we've heard more from the book of Acts, sharing the stories of apostles starting their work after the death and rising of Jesus. These aren't stories of faith superheroes. These are stories of ordinary people who allowed their faith in God and in the Christ to transform their lives. This story we heard today of Tabitha, her Greek name is Dorcas, not an apostle, not a famous woman except in her own community, and only because of the care she took of others. She lived her faith in God by making clothes for the community, particularly the widows, women who usually had very little in the way of financial means. No superhuman feats there, nothing an ordinary person could not do. But because of her faith, she believed in her responsibility to care for others, and she lived it in the best way she knew how. Sounds kind of like the ministries of a lot of churches today, doesn't it? Food pantries and prayer shawl ministries and education programs and mentoring programs and ministries of helping hands, all the same thing. <clears throat> all people sensing a need, and because of their Faith tells them they should act, they do, in whatever way they can. You have that history here at Central. Those stories. Shepherd's Supper, the Clothing Center, the Lucas Jackson Camp at Sky Lake. Persons were nudged by God to do something good. Nudged to serve and to make the lives of people better. Nudged to make the world a better place. God nudged and they made things happen. Shepherd's Supper has for decades and continues to feed people every single week. The Clothing Center for decades has provided free clothing to anyone who needs it. Three times a week, anybody from the neighborhood or the church can go to the Clothing Center and get something to wear. The Lucan's Jackson Camp for decades has transformed from being a, an on-site camp to being a scholarship program that sends Dozens of church and neighborhood children to camp each year, children who might not ever have a chance to go otherwise. God pulls, God nudges, God hints all the time. Most of the time we ignore it. Or we chalk it up to something else. Imagination or indigestion or both. <laughs> but when we listen, great things can happen. The story Cindy read, Peter listens when two strangers show up at the door and ask him to come with them. Now having been there when Jesus was arrested and seeing 
the ultimately fatal consequences of the work Jesus was doing, I'm pretty sure Peter was a little wary of strangers at the door. He should have been. But God pulls, God nudges, God hints, and Peter goes. Notice that in this story, Peter does not spend a lot of time asking who, what, why, when, and where. Notice how much he hesitates. He doesn't. This great story about Peter's faith isn't about signs and wonders and miracles, though it is a miracle story. The great story here is that Peter listens to God and goes where God sends him to do what God sends him to do without hesitation. So Peter goes. And Tabitha, Dorcas, miraculously gets a little more time to do her life work, to care for others, to be an ordinary saint. It should be the same for us, and sometimes it is. You've heard Allison's story. Her call comes out of her experience of God's love for her. Her call comes out of that experience of wanting to share it with others. We're not all called to ordain ministry, but we are all called all the time. I cannot tell you how many persons throughout 20 years in ministry, how many persons I know who first heard the stirrings of their call to help the world at camp, either as campers or counselors, or volunteers. Sometimes, sometimes we do need to be in the biggest church of all, the glory of God's creation, to hear what God's trying to say to us. We celebrate that today as we celebrate the ongoing work of our Lucas Jackson Committee and, and this church dedicated to making sure kids get the opportunity to hear God's voice. But today is also a day to ask where God has been present in our lives. Where has God been nudging, pushing, pulling, hinting, would you even know how to recognize it? And what are you going to do about it? God is calling. Even ordinary people, especially ordinary people. You and me and us. God is calling. Are we listening? What miracles might happen to us, around us, even through us? If we did listen, God is speaking, God is calling, God has work for us to do. Thanks be to God for that gift. Amen. We are going to sing again, and I think, oh, we'll just sing the whole thing. I was going to cut it short, but we'll sing the whole thing. Should we stand as we're able and comfortable? in body or spirit and sing they'll know we are Christians by our love.
as you go into this week and into this world, go and let them know that you are Christian with your love, with your work, with the call to help the world. Go and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. Thank you.